Being compliant is just straightforward. Being maliciously compliant? Well, that's another story. Welcome to this episode of Malicious Compliance. Our first one is from Ad Electrical 5354 So I used to work for one of the top delivery companies in the UK. There was a lot less competition 15 years ago. I was very good at my specific delivery job and I often undertook every office task, from single delivery routes to maintaining the office and delivery distribution to all routes. Then one day, in comes the new manager, and it was like the cliché that you dread. You probably all have met the type. Suit slightly too big and a trainee mustache. He had just finished uni and, to his credit, got himself a business degree. The problem with this company was every office around the whole country was run differently and this poor manager was expecting every person to do things by the letter, but most of the work was done on goodwill since we were allowed to finish for the day when we had completed our deliveries. It was creating a rod for our own backs to be honest, but it was nice to finish earlier on lighter days. Finally, on his third day, after watching me daily and asking me why I was doing things in certain orders, I told him my delivery route was complex and required it to be done in a certain order to ensure the time deliveries got there before 1pm and the other delivery staff were fed their delivery materials by myself at certain times to ensure optimum delivery speeds and minimum delay. He replied, No, it doesn't work like that. I simply stared for a bemused few seconds and I said I don't understand. He wanted it by the letter today as per company guidelines. I argued very hard against it and said he will really regret it because we won't complete, but he insisted I was wrong because it was all timed and measured. So after an exasperated 15 minute heated discussion, I did as I was told, to the letter. The five staff I fed deliveries to weren't happy, but understood. It was like a domino effect of carnage. At 12.30pm, we all rang into the office to report the failed time deliveries, which he promptly freaked out about because they were strictly monitored. The subsequent enforced break times and shuffling required also left 15-20% to of each walk unfinished, which he also now has to complete himself on top of the timed ones. He had to fill out reports all for failed 1pm deliveries, all walk failures, and then had to call in managers from other offices to help finish it all. They all finished around 4 hours late. He was not popular. The next day he came to me and asked me to show him the mechanics of the delivery route in detail because I didn't expect that to happen if I'm honest. It was close enough to an apology for me. <laughs> we actually became good friends over time, but he never questioned me when I said nope ever again. Ah yes, the good by the book managers. They come in, they're fresh, they're green, they don't really know what the hell they're doing but they like to think they are because they have a degree. I'm glad that shit fell apart on his first day and he got to see the mistake he had made. On top of the fact that it seems like going forward things ended up working out. This next one is by Mirror Signal Crash. There is a huge nationwide electronics retail in the UK called Curry's. They are renowned for having terrible customer service but very occasionally having decent prices. I was in the market for a KitchenAid stand mixer and my employer had an arrangement where I could buy Curry's gift cards for a 10% discount. I was a bit reluctant to use them based on past experiences but thought I would take advantage of saving a bit of cash and ordered my mixer online. Delivery due in a week. Easy peasy I thought. It was about £250, $300 before discount. Delivery day comes and goes, no mixer. The next day I ring up customer service and ask what happened. After 20 minutes on hold, they tell me that the product is out of stock and I will need to wait for their next delivery in 10 days time. Not too bad, I'm a patient person. 10 days later, still no mixer or order update even though it's showing as in stock and available to buy on their website. Back on the phone to customer service, more time on hold. This time I was told there is an order backlog and they couldn't tell me when it would be delivered, so I asked for a refund. Unfortunately, in the UK, if you pay by gift card, you can only get a refund by gift card. 
At this point, I had no desire to ever use curries again and was disappointed in myself for giving it a go. I would have no use for a gift card, so I decided to give them a bit more time. No prizes for guessing that this didn't bear fruit. A couple of weeks later, I used customer service online chat to see what is going on. Again, they're completely unable to help or confirm when or if I would receive my order. I asked what I was expected to do and the bloke said something along the lines of, No idea mate, you would have to take it up with our board, ha <laughs> ha. Fine, it's malicious compliance time. A quick trip to the company's house website gives me a list of all their directors. Another hour on LinkedIn and I've tracked them all down. I proceed to send every director a summary of what has happened and links to screenshots of the online chat I had with the customer service rep. Less than a day later, I get a call from the CEO's personal assistant, apologizing profusely and personally guaranteeing she will sort it out. By the time this all happened, the mixer had gone down by another 60 pounds, so she processed my order again and said she would arrange for the accounts team to send me a voucher for the difference. She was genuinely the hero of this story. The very next day, my mixer arrives. Happy days! A few days after that, I get a letter with a Curry's voucher. I thought this would be the end of my sorry saga. However, as icing on the cake, they proceeded to send me three more 60 pound vouchers at random intervals over the next few months. I can only guess that their admin team is as useless as their customer service team. For completeness, I spent the vouchers on a new oven, which unsurprisingly turned up late and faulty and had to be replaced. It's pretty sad that the customer service was so useless you literally had to go to their board of directors, get information, and then have to deal with the CEO's assistant. But it also shows at least the CEO's assistant followed through, which is something that customer service couldn't even get you to a point to assist you, which is just sad all around. And our final one is from Mysterious One. Many years ago, I worked in an aerospace machinery company where I was the only female that wasn't in an office or administrative position. My job was doing quality control. The sexism and discrimination had started before I got hired, but that's another story. It did affect how I was treated, which is why I mention it for this story. As a parts inspector, I would verify that a part was made to specifications and then put my stamp on it showing it had been inspected and what the results were. One day I was trained to measure the diameter of a type of shaft that is used in airplane engines. The roundness of that shaft's diameter had to be measured within a couple of millionths of an inch. Just to give you an idea, the typical hair on your head is a few thousandths of an inch, so if you divided your hair into a thousand slices, if there was even one bump on this shaft that was bigger than two of those slices, it could potentially wreck a plane or destroy a plane engine by creating too much vibration during operation. My boss explained how he wanted me to perform the inspections using a very sensitive machine that operates sort of like the needles you see for detecting earthquakes. I won't get detailed, and I probably don't remember much anyway now, but I did a couple days worth of inspections before I realized that the way he instructed me to check them looked wrong to me. I asked another, more experienced inspector about it, and he figured it out fully and said we were inspecting it wrong. The simplest explanation I can find to describe this, if you picture a mountain valley with a canyon and you were supposed to give the maximum depth, you'd go from the lowest part of the canyon to the highest point of the highest peak. The instructions he gave me were essentially reading from the ground to the peak instead. So I went to my boss to tell him and he basically said I didn't know what I was talking about and ordered me to continue doing it as he told me to. Now, I could lose my job and career over bad inspections, so I told him, Okay, I'll do what you tell me, but I will not put my stamp on it. I'll do the chart and somebody else will have to do the interpretations and stamp them. He agreed. A few months later, I get called into his office so I could be written up. A multi-million dollar contract was almost lost because the inspections on all of these shafts were bad. I told him that my inspection stamps were not on those orders because he had told me I was wrong and so I'd only make the charts for someone else to interpret. 
He backpedaled quickly after that, claiming he had sent out parts for independent verification and the independent verification had said he was right, that I was mistaken, blah blah blah. Nobody lost their job, but I think that was only because his father-in-law was one of the owners. These kind of bosses are the worst, the ones that are never wrong, they can never be wrong, even if the facts state otherwise, even if the wrongness is right in their face, they'll never admit it. And considering his father-in-law was one of the owners, it probably explains why he became a boss there anyway. Good on you for standing your ground. Alright, that's enough maliciousness for the day. Well that wraps up this episode of Malicious Compliance. If you liked the video, please drop a like, share my content on all of your social media, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure to hit that bell so you're notified every time I upload, and drop a comment down below. It really helps with the algorithm and helps new people find my channel. Thanks for watching, thanks to my patrons, have a great day and stay safe out there.